My name is Paul Gasper, P-A-U-L-G-A-S-P-E-R. I am the founder and lead investigator for Wisconsin, Illinois Paranormal. Um, my ghost story uh, essentially involves a case uh, that we did uh, in Germantown, Wisconsin, which is about a half hour uh, northwest of Milwaukee, um, where a, the client um, contacted us about some activity that she had uh, in her home um, that she wanted us to get checked out uh, for her, uh, find her answers. Uh, of course, you know, we go in there and try to debunk claims before trying to prove any kind of paranormal activity or haunting. Um, so we were, you know, up for it as we normally are. Um, and before the investigation could take place, uh, they found some human remains on her property. Um, there's some woods uh, behind her house and uh, some hunters found a badly decomposed body back there. Um, at the time, we had no idea who it would have been, anything like that. Um, there was even no speculation at that time of who it was. Um, and we had no idea if what, had, what was occurring in her house had anything to do with uh, the findings uh, in the woods there. Um, so we went in uh, purely based upon uh, the uh, claims that she told us, you know, feelings of being watched, um, you know, disembodied noises. Um, at one point she had a um, wind chime kind of just spinning on its own, um, stuff like that. What the client stated um, was that she believed that some of um, her thoughts of possible activity occurring in the house probably started around the time where they would have thought the um, person had expired um, in the woods. So we're talking maybe up to about a half a year's time by the time we were contacted uh, that this was going on. Um, so we went in uh, the first time and uh, really, you know, tried to debunk some things, some of the claims, couldn't find um, anything unexplainable um, and nothing paranormal occurred uh, except for right at the very end of the investigation when we were about to walk out um, when we heard a disembodied voice. Um, after talking with the client uh, at that point um, we had decided to come back because she was going to be in the process of moving out uh, so we went back for a follow-up investigation a few months later uh, when the house was empty and at this point, with the time passing, there started to be speculation um, that the remains that were found belonged to that of a, a person by the name of David Hopp, um, who was from up north uh, in the state of Wisconsin here. Um, and he was on the run uh, from law enforcement, wanted for um, kidnapping women and holding them uh, in his basement. Uh, and uh, assaulting them. Uh, I think it happened two consecutive days uh, and I guess he also did it out in public where he kind of insulted women. Um, so he was on the run and they thought it was him solely based upon him contacting his ex-wife who was lives right there in the area of where the client uh, lived um, and he was last seen around the time where they thought uh, this person that they found had expired. Um, but of course that was merely speculation. But it was fuel for us. So when we went back in, we went back in with the um, with the mindset that we were going to make contact with David Hopp. Overall, throughout the course of the whole night, um, basically when we were referencing David Hopp, talking to David Hopp, um, trying to ask him questions uh, as they related to what he possibly could have done to these women and everything like that, um, we actually got results this time. Um, and in my opinion, um, again, in a field based mostly on theory, in my opinion, I believe we did make contact with uh, David Hopp that second evening that we were there. Um, and it was later confirmed actually uh, in late 2011 that the remains that they did find um, through DNA testing did belong to. Um, 
I don't have a personal relation to the location. Uh, it, like I said, it was a client uh, that contacted us. Uh, the location is in Germantown, Wisconsin. Um, it is just north of um, Highway Q. Uh, and it's on a side road that runs adjacent to uh, Highway 41 in Germantown. Um, and it, the house is way off uh, the street. Uh, there's a really long driveway to get to it. It's kind of like situated like right in the middle of all these woods with the main part of the woods from the back of the house going to the freeway. Um, and as far as us investigating, uh, we also investigated outside and um, the walk from the back door of the house to where the body was um, when we got there, we saw the police tape. It was probably about a minute walk, so it wasn't very far off um, from her back porch. And the, the client didn't have much for us in the, in the way of history. Um, as far as she knew, uh, it's just another house that was built out there. Uh, it's not that old of a house. Aside from anything historically happening there um, and the, you know, the, the body being found, the remains being found, other than that, there's no other significant, uh, you know, attribute. Um, I do not know who the previous owners were. Uh, in this case, it wasn't so much uh, checking the history of the house, checking uh, with previous owners if they had anything going on, um, only because from the time of initial contact to the time they found the remains, and then a few months later when we went back, and there was speculation, we really just um, kind of just concentrated on that time frame, on the uh, person that it was uh, speculated at the time who that person was uh, in the back, in the woods, um, which as far as uh, how he died, um, I, I have done some recent research. They're, they don't know exactly if it was murder or suicide. It could have been either or. Um, I know at the time they did find a weapon uh, near the remains, whether it was self-inflicted, uh, they're not sure. The other theory is that um, his ex-wife may have killed him again. That there was one instance where uh, my pant leg was grabbed um, down in the basement uh, while we were doing one of our experiments, um, which actually uh, is captured as part of an EVP clip that we have where I say out loud that my pant leg was tugged and then there's kind of like a chuckle or a laugh almost as if like something there um, was being kind of evil and or maybe even playful and kind of laughing about the fact that it, it grabbed me um, so we were provoking a lot and um, I kind of think that maybe that was just um, whoever was there, which at the time we didn't know who, but if it was David Hopp, it was certainly that we got his attention. Um, other than uh, some EVPs, uh, the shadow photographs, the possible figure in the woods, um, people uh, that were there uh, hearing disembodied noises and voices, um, we haven't been back since. So aside from all those, um, there was no other experiences to be had. The only way to determine if the entity is still there is to go back and, and try another investigation. I believe the activity occurred because the individual um, died right in her backyard. Um, it's affected me in a, a lot of positive ways. With all of the questions, uh, internally and externally, um, that being able to go into a place and have something strong to reference like we didn't have the first time we were there um, made me believe that we can communicate properly uh, with those who have passed. When they confirmed that it was David Hopp in the woods, those were his remains, I felt proud of what we did the work that we did, the results that we got, um, you know, it, it, it kind of lends a sense of credibility 
to what we do. Uh, the other storyteller is the client. So the photographs uh, of the uh, receding shadow figure that we call it, um, we saw those probably within five, ten minutes of them being taken. As far as uh, the audio, I mean, when you have a voice phenomena, which is basically a disembodied voice you hear and then you capture later, um, or actually well, you capture it at the same time but you hear it later, um, disembodied voices we heard right away. I mean, that was real time. Um, but the other audio evidence um, was listened. We, listened, we heard that back within some of us respectively, I'd say within like about one to three or four days following the investigation. The shadow photographs um, receding, uh, first photograph from the torso up, it's on the floor. Second photograph, it's about shoulder up, receding. Third photograph, completely gone. Um, photograph uh, in the woods, uh, it's undetermined what it is. Um, it could be uh, matrixing. Could be paranormal. Um, I'm surprised. I think I was more elated. Uh, if I'm going to try to use a word close to surprised, um, that the experiences that we had of the pant tugging, of hearing uh, like the wind chimes, the footsteps, the disembodied voices, um, that we have captured the audio, that we had the photographs. Um, it just lens and we also had um, by the way high um, EMF readings in, in some parts that were of the house that were unexplainable but um, it kind of just ties itself all together that all the evidence is so substantial that you, you can't possibly say that um, it was all normal or natural uh, explanations or causes of those things so uh, the photographs were taken by Keith um, uh, down in the basement um, in the photographs, if you study them, uh, the other three investigators, myself, Melissa, and Josh, can all be seen. Actually, Melissa, you can see Melissa standing behind me, but through the reflection of a mirror uh, on the other end of the basement. Um, and so Keith took the photographs uh, from one end of the basement to the other. And um, the EVPs were uh, captured uh, mainly by myself on my Olympus audio recorder. Uh, the photograph of the possible figure out in the woods at the site where the body was found was actually taken by our, our investigator Melissa's mother. I am uh, a religious uh, person. I am spiritual. Um, I believe in God, therefore I believe in the devil. Um, I think that if anybody believes in one, they have to believe in the other. And I think if, uh, with that belief, you also have to um, believe that there is something spiritual out there. Uh, I would have to say, um, yeah, I, I definitely 